Hey everybody, it's me, Calvin. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing on the side of the Horde. I'm gonna be doing a tutorial series on how to play the World of Warcraft. Because there's a lot of people out there, I guess they don't know how to do some basic stuff, and I wanted to show people how to do things in a video, because the tutorials I found, they're not very good. Or they just don't explain things in the way that I would explain them. And so I think it really helps. I'm not going to explain how to get World of Warcraft onto your computer. There's plenty of places that will explain how to do that in depth. Not to mention the fact that you can use torrents and the official Blizzard website to download. You could also get a copy of the client from private servers or you can go buy the CDs in the store. So this is my troll warrior that I made and I'm going to be using him to play this game step by step so you can see how it is. One of the things that's great about the World of Warcraft is the amount of customizability. Literally hundreds of options that you can use just to make it exactly the way you want to play it, which includes action bars, the controls that you use, the movement as default WASD, WASD, features that I would recommend is spell cast on self and auto loot on. When you go to give yourself what's called a buff, which can give you better health or a stronger defense, it's instant rather than having to select the spell and then select yourself, which takes time and you want things to be instant and quick. Auto loot on. Every time you kill a creature, it'll drop items. And I'll explain more about items later. You don't want to have to sit there and take the time, click every single item that you get from a creature that's killed. Just use auto loot and it'll put everything from that creature into your bag space. There's also a way to make macros and I'll do a short tutorial on those later on in another video. A quick overview of the interface. I'm using Quest Helper as an add-on. It's a free add-on. All you do is download it and put it into your add-ons folder and then activate it in the character selection screen. All it does is tell me where to go. It doesn't change anything about how I'm playing the game. On the screen you see my health, you see the creature's health, you see the main action bar where all the spells and abilities will be kept, and then there's a mini-map and a second map. The mini-map is useful for when you're in the battlegrounds. You can tell where your teammates are, where the flag is. It also shows you a satellite view of the area that you're in. The map up in the corner, this will show you if there's anybody nearby that you can interact with. Usually it's for finding people who have quests and they'll have a little exclamation over their head and it'll show up on this little map here. You can also set the clock to local time which will tell you how long you've been playing and you can also set an alarm if you want to only play for a short amount of time because you got to go to work or school. On the bottom here you can access a bunch of different features. One is the character pane that shows all your inventory so when you get new items you can drag them from your bags into your inventory and equip them on your character. You also have your spell book which has a list of every single ability that your character will know so you can drag those from your spell book into your action bar. At level 10 and onward, you get what's called talents, so it makes all your abilities a little bit better, but I'll explain that in another video. The escape menu, this is to log out of the game, this is to quit the game, and also to adjust all the little things like video controls, audio controls, and interface options. The help menu is pretty much only good for using it to unstick your character. One of the main functions of the World of Warcraft is to get quests and to turn in quests. Now when somebody has a quest for you, it'll show up as an exclamation over their head. So you just run up to them and ask them what they have got to say. And you can read through it if you want. I usually just auto accept. Using my quest helper, it'll point me to where I need to go. It's to either kill a creature or pick up a certain thing, go talk to some person. And I'll go into that more in depth in later videos. And then to turn in quests, you usually just come right back to that same person who gave you the quest and they'll have an orange question mark over the top of their head. You turn it in, it gives you experience and usually a little bit of coin and also sometimes a quest item. Now when you kill a creature after you've hit it too many times or you hit it with spells or whatever, you can then loot the creature as long as it sparkles because then that means there's something in there. When you right click on it, it'll bring up a loot box and in this loot box it'll have every item that that creature has dropped. And sometimes an important item will come this way, sometimes a quest item will be there, but usually there's just trash that you can sell back to the computer for a little bit coin. Later on, when you do dungeons, and when you do what's called raids, there's going to be a thing called rolling. 
And there's a whole thing about raid etiquette, which I'll get into in another tutorial, and how people get all upset over items. But sometimes with the right items, your character can actually do really well. I'll also explain what the different colors mean for different items later on. Now every time you kill a creature, every time you discover a new area, every time you finish a quest, you get experience for it. Eventually you're going to hit the next level, and this is done just by getting the experience. So some people just kill a bunch of creatures, some people do quests. Leveling up is automatic, you don't have to select anything, it just takes you to the next level. The important stuff about choosing a quest reward, when you go to do it, you always try to pick the thing that's going to help your character the most. And if nothing there helps your character, and you can just pick the thing that will sell for the most, because the coin will help you in another way. The lowest items sell for a few coppers. A hundred coppers equals one silver. A hundred silvers equals one gold. And there's not really a limit on how many gold you can have. Buying and selling to NPCs, all you have to do is go up and talk to them. They'll open up their vendor window. When you right-click stuff in your inventory, it'll sell it to them. And when you right-click stuff in their window, you'll buy it from them. Some NPCs will actually give you the ability to repair your armor. And that's a good thing to do because if your armor breaks, you can't use it anymore. But you can still keep it on your character, you just can't use it. Now you can see to save some time, I've already completed these objectives. I got the cactus apples, I got the scorpid tail, I got the claw of Sarkoth, and the vile familiars killed. And then once those are done, I can then go turn those in. When you go up to your class trainer, supposing that you've reached a new level where you can get abilities, He'll have a list of things that you can pick, and as long as you have enough coin to pay for them, you can learn all the new abilities. So man, what you be thinking about this new video series, man? What are you talking about, and who are you? I'm the troll of the new video series. We're gonna be famous. Well then... Luck tar, young warchief.